Now we have sound. I had to reorganize some stuff because my second camera stopped working. I think my video card on my laptop is very unhappy right now. Hello Amy and hello Paradesk. Lucy Elsom, welcome. Yeah, audio is working now. I had to tell it to listen to this camera instead of the camera that's no longer plugged in. So today I'm taking it to the next level. This was the previous level I had which are kind of cartoony novelty bugs, which is probably cool for most Halloween purposes. But for the piece of art I'm working on, I actually want like more realistic bugs. So I've been sculpting these guys out of, uh, I think, Sculpey 3. And now I'm gonna go in and add a bunch of details with epoxy clay, uh, epoxy sculpt. love this stuff. You can smooth epoxy sculpt with water, but this stuff makes it smooth like butter. Delicious, delicious butter. I'm making the spider somewhat similar to this one from the album cover art. I'm using white epoxy sculpt to put the details. I'm basically going to be making like this you know this colored pattern I'm gonna make it kind of a raised pattern and I want to add some texture to the legs I don't know how much of that will be picked up by the mold but that's what I'm here to experiment with So for those of you who don't know, Epoxy Sculpt is a two-part um, mix that basically turns into a kind of clay that you can work with for a couple hours and then it sets up very hard, like ro rock hard. So it's much stronger than polymer clay. But the trade-off is it's short working life. I have polymer clay sculptures that I've been working on for almost 10 years now that I just keep coming back to and dusting off and kind of rejuvenating the surface, adding more to it, taking it away. Amy says, I wanted to do some digital art, and then the Wacom driver died on me. So I'm reinstalling it. Yeah, Wacom drivers are finicky. I, I feel like I have to reinstall the Wacom driver on my computer, like, every couple of months or something. Although, not my computer at work for some reason, just my home computer. What kind of digital art are you wanting to do? Are you working in Photoshop?
All right, I also need to be recording this for my tutorial. Lucy says, I'm going to sit here watching you whilst sculpting my fox. Cool, you're making a fox, huh? What are you making it out of? Uh, polymer clay? Amy says, when I use it often, it stays put, but I haven't used it in a couple weeks, so it left me. And Photoshop, wanted to create a twilight sky as a background for a project for school. Make it more fun. Oh, nice. So you're going to put, like, uh, shirtless vampire boys in the background? Is that is that the idea? Twilight, get it? The hit film... Twilight, you may have heard of it. So first I'm going in and strengthening the legs down here. Some of them snapped off while I was sanding and carving them to get them into a little better shape than when I originally sculpted them. Onassis, welcome! What is up is I'm uh, making higher res bugs. I want to see how far I can push this this bug sculpting thing since I want to I'm doing a tutorial for Halloween that I hope to have out by next weekend. Um, but then, in addition, I also want to have like really, really nice, uh, realistic bugs for my Demon Hunter sculpture that I was doing the other day. You know, the one with the sap melting all around it. <clears throat> Lucy says, uh, Fimo Pro is my choice of polymer clay. What do you like about Fimo? If I recall the last time I used Fimo, it's, uh, it's quite a bit harder than, than like Sculpey. It reminds me of Chernit or Cernit. I don't know how to pronounce it because it's a German word, but C-E-R-N-I-T. I need to uh, reacquaint myself with all of those products very soon because I'm going to be doing a tutorial on, I'm going to start an intermediate uh, polymer clay um, series. And so I want to be able to, th there's some good, um, I mean, there's a lot of good tutorials out there already for, for polymer clays. Um, that actually do comparisons of the, like how stiff they are, how much they uh, bend after baking, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't think I'm going to focus too much on the technical details since that's already out there. But I do need to at least have uh, recent experience with them. I've had experience with all of them in the past, but Oh, there's a newish brand, probably five or eight years old at this point, I consider newish. 
shows how old I am. But uh, is it Kate Cato? I, I noticed it at Michael's a while back, and I kept thinking, oh, another polymer clay. It looks just like all the others. Why? Why'd they do that? But I need to check that out. Michael Barthoffer, greetings from Austria. Let's see. Okay, I want to make sure I'm close enough and not not reading that as Australia. Uh, welcome, Michael. Thanks for tuning in from Austria. Amy says, digitally painting a sky once everything works. Sounds like fun. Sounds better than calculus homework, at least. Lucy says, I like it because it holds my shapes and lines really well. Plus, I get a really good deal with the supplier. Oh, very nice. Why do you get a good deal with the supplier? Do you, do you know them personally? Have you done favors? Did you kidnap their children? Like, I, I need to know how to get a good deal with the suppliers. Trying to decide how much uh, I want to connect the little, these little fangy guys to the bottom because when I put the the mold around it, it's gonna it's gonna go and create these huge undercuts there, which shouldn't be a problem if I'm casting it in hot glue or even resin because it's semi-flexible when it comes out. On the other hand, it'll be hard to actually fill those in. Man, my camera. Maybe I just need to look into a new camera. One specifically that has good ratings on focusing on close-ups because that is something I obviously want to do a lot and something I obviously have a lot of trouble with. Anyway, you can see how far the things stick out there. Urson says Turk it too, which I assume means turkey based on the name. Lucy says, uh, uh, hard negotiation. Oh, wow. So, I'm pretty sure that's code for kidnapping their children. I got a really cool, um, well, I think it's going to be really cool, from what I can tell, a clay conditioning machine that was invented by a lady here in the US and uh, it's like a this big squisher device it's like super solid iron um, I just emailed her and said hey I'm gonna be doing some tutorials on intermediate polymer clay your product looks cool can I have one for review and she said sure and sent it to me and I think it's been probably like eight months and I feel really bad she emailed me the other day and was like uh, so where's that video and I was very apologetic and said man things uh, just had not gone according to the schedule that I had set when I emailed her and I think I learned a lesson which is don't ask for stuff until you're like ready to go out the gate when you get it It was one of those things where I would like to review it for my channel because I know there's a lot of people who use who do a lot of polymer clay work, but I like I just don't do enough to really justify another device, but the price of another device. But I was like, well, if if I can get her, you know, some sales from my video, then 
it should be worth it to her. I hope I'm right. I guess if I'm just totally wrong and she's really upset, I could always send it back to her. Stefan G, hello. All right, so I think that with this amount of undercuttedness under the fangs there, like once I get the piece out, I can just clip across here and uh, I'll have my separated fangs and legs. That is the hope. Okay, trying to figure out which I should, if I should do the detail on the legs or the detail on the butt right now. I also wonder, can I get this closer? And then I won't feel such a need to keep poking it right up into the camera and wasting everyone's time. Huh. It just wants to focus and unfocus continually at that range, apparently. I think I'm going to have to look into like a semi-professional level video camera. I mean, I want one anyway for tutorials, but I just need to make sure that it's capable of streaming, unlike my DSLR camera which shuts off every 29 minutes and 29 seconds. So I think what I might do is, I'll start with the legs. See, I have to think strategically, where can I put my thumbs to hold it while I'm sculpting on it? Actually, I guess I could just glue it down to a board, huh? If I have it glued to a board, then I can just move that around. Yeah, I'm going to do that. No, wait. I'm going to start doing legs. I'm going to see how that works out because it's nice to be able to tilt it and get around the legs with my tool like this, which you can't do when it's on a thing. A thingy thing. Some of these proportions I got wrong too, like you can see where the first knee is on all of these joints, but this one it's way shorter, so. That's what this material is wonderful for, is going in and just fixing little oopsies like that, because you can blend it into the rest of the sculpture really easily. do it really easily. This, this isn't a particularly awkward situation. I can't press too hard or the leg will snap off. 
and I can't get the tool around to all the angles I would like. Stefan, you think the spider looks vaguely edible? Well, I think all spiders are, are edible. But yeah, this one kind of looks like chocolate. The, uh, the color of the Sculpey 3 I was using is very chocolatey. So I'm trying to decide how much do I want to um, emulate the little, little ridges and bumps on this art which oh uh, there we go now you can see it yeah see how textury those they're almost like lobster claws I don't know that the amount of time required to reproduce those would actually show up in the finished piece so I might just do something that's vaguely reminiscent I'll play around a little bit So, camera being here, likes to focus there, but not where I actually hold it. So, let's try it a couple inches further. Lucy, you a fan of chocolate? I sure am. I could probably eat chocolate all day, every day, if given the opportunity. That would not be good for my curves. Or, I guess it would be too good for my curves. I'm going to grab a brush. I'm always torn when I'm going to be brushing on uh, epoxy sculpt because I like these brushes but they also work really well for paint and which would be fine because if I if I clean the brush in the safety solvent afterwards it's fine but about 80% of the time I forget and then the brush is totally ruined. But nothing blends epoxy clay in like like a semi-stiff, short brush with safety solvent. Oh my, so Lucy said, bleep the curves, we'll die happy. See, and that, that comment was held for review by um, YouTube because that bleep that I just said is some kind of slang that I only have a vague notion of how naughty a word it is based on, you know, British movies that I've seen and TV shows. So I honestly don't know how bad a word it is. Like, um, in Harry Potter, when they say bloody hell, which to me sounds like a PG word or you know, phrase at worst. It's just kind of a funny, quirky thing to say. But apparently it's actually offensive to some people in other parts of the world. Which means I really should not have said it on the stream because I try to keep this... Stream PG 13 ish. Paradosk says chocolate was always kind of eh for me. Well, you are lucky, Paradosk. Stefan says depends on the season for me. 
Salty food in summer, savory food in winter. Huh. Lucy says, oops, sorry, it really isn't a swear word at all. Okay, good to know. And I'll just, I'll just say it right here, right now. Sod it. Sod the curves. Is it, so, in America, in the U.S., there are different, like, you know, regional places where some words are see, seen as, I don't know, worse than others. For instance, I grew up um, saying crap. I just, my parents aren't really swearers, and I just never was much of a swearer myself. Um, but I would say crap a lot, which is like such a m mild, you know, like that's, that's like a rated G movie thing that a character would say in a movie, right? Oh crap. Maybe that would make it PG. I don't know. But I have known people in the Southern U S states who would get offended over that. I think it's, it's probably a religious thing where it's like, oh, well. You clearly mean a worse word. That's just a, you know, a substitution for it. But we know what you mean. Sophia says, finally, I can join one of your live streams again. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sophia. Sheridan Road. Hello, Sheridan. I'm super excited to see you streaming. I was just watching the extra credit Tomb Raider videos, and I just subscribed today. Oh, awesome. You're just on a uh, Josh Foreman kick today. I guess there's worse things to be kicked by. I just can't get enough of my melodious, uh, nasally voice. Kind of like in just putting these little these little ridges in the legs here, which gosh darn it, you guys still can't see very well because the GD camera. By GD, I mean gosh darn camera can't just like oh you know what? If I leave it here, I can manually adjust the focus. One second. You. Configure video, camera controls, okay, focus, don't auto focus, focus where I say, focus what I say, okay, so I'm sculpting right around here, okay, that's the wrong way, let's go this way, oh, oh, nice, Okay, apply, okay, okay, there we go, that's better, as long as I don't move the camera, we'll be fine now. Sheridan says, really love your views on art, actually, well, thank you, and how you speak about it, it's really inspiring. Well, I seek to be inspiring, so I appreciate that, thank you. Anderson, hello! Parabiens, Parabiens, per, hmm. Per, okay, no, that's the best I can do. Lots of people today. Yes, yes, there are any. Sophia is happy for the great focus. Yeah, I like being focused. I just, I got it find a camera that will that can do autofocus smartly and this is not that like this camera had all the best reviews I spent several hours researching best um, webcams for art wait did I look up for art maybe I didn't and that's my mistake I think I was just I thought oh I should I should add for art to this search. Maybe I did and I didn't find much of anything. Uh, 
Regardless, I ended up with this highly rated one. I actually bought two of them, and now I'm uh, now I'm sad that I did. All the people who stream their faces are happy with it, and yeah, as long as it's uh, it's out of ways, really, the focusing thing isn't an issue, but. For tiny little arts, it is an issue. Sophia, you're from Austria. What time is it in Austria? I'm trying to think. The sun's over here, like right in the top of the sky for us. So it must be late for you guys. Lucy is from the UK, which is why she can say things like sod the, sod the curves. I couldn't get away with that. I would just sound pretentious. Stefan's from Germany. Michael says it's 10 p.m. Yeah, so Michael and Sophia, you guys must know each other since you're both from Austria, huh? You must be neighbors. The funniest presumption I've ever run into was... Uh, someone heard that I had lived in Alaska and they said, oh, did you know, you know, whoever, John? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Do you know how big Alaska is? But then in a, uh, a contradicting story to that, JJ is from Finland. I have not been to Finland. I would love to go though. What's your favorite country to visit? Um, like many Americans, I am not very well traveled, sadly. Um, I lived in Japan for five years when I was a kid, and I really want to go back there. Uh, but other than Japan and a very brief visit to Korea, like I've never been to Europe, I've never been to South America, um, never been to Africa. Um, yeah, I've lived in, uh, very, uh, varied regions of the U.S. Like, I lived in Texas, way in the south, and Alaska, way in the north. And Michigan, which is kind of in the middle. And now I live on the west coast in Seattle. Uh, someday, I think the place I want to visit most, maybe besides Japan, just for nostalgia, the place I want to visit most is Turkey because they have some of the coolest ruins and like cities carved into giant rock formations, which I don't know, that just, that's so inspiring and fires my imagination. I, you know, I've seen millions of pictures of it, but I've never experienced being there live. Anderson is from Brazil. Dane, hi Dane, says, have you reinforced the spider's legs with steel wire? No, actually I have not, and a couple of them snapped off while I was working on it. But it's fine, because it's just going to be down on this board when I mold it. So, it doesn't matter that they're crazy fragile right now. This is just for um, molding. I don't care about the piece when it's done. Oh, but I was telling a story about Alaska, knowing people from Alaska. So, here's the craziest story. I was in Portland, which is about three hours drive south of here. I was in Portland um, doing work as an extra on the TV show The Librarians, which is it's like a TNT show. I don't know. It's, it's been around a couple seasons. Um, but I had done some extra work on the TV show Grimm, and so I was in their system and I got called down for an episode of Librarians, which was like, it was an episode about 
about a modern Dorian Gray who had this nightclub, and so they were looking for, like, hip, weird-looking people to be in this... I think it was supposed to be a Lon uh, London nightclub. But, um... So anyway, yeah, I was hanging out all day at this, at this, like... Uh, what it, like it used to be a warehouse but it was converted into a, a chic uh, nightclub of some sort uh, but yeah I I randomly tripped over a lady who was also an extra there and uh, by tripped over I mean I did a stunt fall because she was hilariously sitting in a hallway with her legs out like blocking the hallway and I thought it'd be funny to, like, do one of those Pratt Falls. It's like, I can't believe you did that! And then say, oh, just kidding. Because I'm super immature, and that's the kind of thing I do. And it was supposed to be a quiet set, and I was too noisy. Which which was extra stupid on top of that. I, I am not the most uh, socially adept person, which may shock all of you, shock and surprise you. But it's true. This is a total side tangent, but... It's so true. Stefan says, Turkey is gorgeous. Yes. Sophia says, my dream destination is Iceland. I have a friend who's in Iceland right now. Uh, Amy wants to go to Greece at some point. It has so many cool monuments. Yeah, that's definitely true. But it doesn't have, as far as I know, it doesn't have cities carved into mountains, which is what's super exciting to me. Amy says, Iceland seems really cool as well. And New Zealand, honestly, I'd jump at the chance to go anywhere. Yes. Tiago. Hi, Tiago from Brazil. Yeah, I got several people from Brazil. Uh, Dane says, been to Iceland many times in Greece too. You have to visit. Someday, someday I will. It's, it's hard for me because uh, m my wife is very ill and she does not travel well at all. So probably a lot of uh, world traveling anytime soon is out of the question for me, but you never know when surprises can come up. Okay, so back to my amazing story. So I'm an extra on The Librarians, on the TV show The Librarians. Uh, we're hanging out between sh shots, you know, where it's just like, okay, everyone, all, all you extras go sit in the hallway and this little, like, break room or the tent outside. So anyway, bump into this lady randomly, and, you know, after my little pratfall prank, I'm like, oh, just, just kidding, blah, blah, blah. Um... And she actually found it funny, thankfully. Because a lot of people would not find that funny. They would be horrified and embarrassed. And I'm a total idiot for, like, presuming that I'm not going to horribly embarrass people when I do that. Which means I need to stop doing that. Which means I just need to not go in public. That's, that's the safest, surest thing right there. Anyway, so we get to talking. And it turns out that she used to live in the same... Well, the one town over from me in Alaska. I lived in a town called North Pole, Alaska, which is not actually the North Pole, but it's a little tourist trap where they have, like, a Santa Claus house that sells lots of, you know, Christmas kitsch. Um, and she... And, and so when I lived in Alaska, it was through my teens. That's probably up to 19, I think. Yeah. And so I started a band in high school like a heavy metal band and I was the lead screamer and she knew about the band but it was like one year after I had left Alaska like the band kept going the bass player took over as vocalist and they recorded an album which I got to do like uh, one one stanza of vocals for because I happened to be visiting Alaska at the time they were recording so I got to get in the booth and do one one thing on the album of a band that I started. Crazy, huh? Anyway, she was in the whole like metal scene, the Alaska metal scene, if you can believe that's a thing. Not just not just Alaskan metal, Alaskan Christian metal. All right, this is how incredible this is. Yeah, so sh so she knew my friends. I had never met her, but she knew my friends and knew about the band that I started. And, uh, and it turns out, like, she and her husband are both authors, and they're doing, like, uh, self-publishing stuff exactly like I'm doing. So it's just, what a weird coincidence, right? So weird. But I guess, yeah, things like that can happen. So, 
all of that spawned from from assuming that you two guys from Austria must know each other. Psychheart says, greetings from Uruguay. Love your work. Oh, thank you. Uh, Siegheart Nitrode. I'm just going to call you Sieg. Thanks for tuning in from Uruguay. I'm actually, I'm trying to place in my head where that actually is. Tell me what country Uruguay is next to. I know it's it's Central American-ish, right? It's not technically South America, or, or is it? Sophia says, so sorry to hear about your wife. Yeah, she's a trooper, though she's super inspiring to me. I've never known anyone who's in as much pain as her, but is also just a delight to be around. Like, she just has such a heart for helping other people. And so she interprets all of her pain and sickness as an opportunity to help find those people who don't have answers to their medical problems and like offer them real advice on how to find doctors that will actually listen to you and she's she's super smart about like figuring out diagnoses like she'll go to specialists and the and they'll be like wait how do you know this stuff she just does a lot of research and helps a lot of people with it Sheridan is amused by the uh, idea of Alaskan Christian metal. Yeah, you know, it's a thing. There's a Facebook uh, group for it. Andrew Sinson says, sorry for the question, but what kind of material is this? This is epoxy sculpt. Do, do, do. Modeling compound. It's a two-part epoxy that sets up in about three hours. You have about an hour to two hours to work with it before it gets obnoxious to work with. Dane says, Josh, did you check out the new material Creature Cast Rubber, a liquid neoprene rubber? Um, creature cast rubber. Is that is that a, a smooth on product? I I think I've seen ads for it in various places, but I have not had personal experience with it. Um, mostly because I don't I I haven't really done any prosthetics. I'm always doing sculptures, so having like realistic flexible stuff is not something I care about yet. But at some point, I keep getting encouraged by various people that I need to go on the TV show Face Off. And like, that is my favorite show, and it would be awesomely fun to be on it. Uh, but I feel like I would have to dedicate at least, I don't know, two or three months and probably a thousand dollars to getting up to speed with all the materials and techniques that they use. Like, I have a general idea, and I'm sure I could pick it up quickly, but, you know, with, with any field of art, there's just, there's a lot of subtlety that uh, if you just jump right in the deep end, you're going to look like an idiot. Sieghart says, Uruguay is between Argentina and Brazil. Okay, I gotcha. JJ says, are you still into metal? Any all-time favorite bands from the genre? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely still say the vast majority of my collection is and I still buy a lot of metal um, my favorite band well I mean I'm doing all this art for the band Demon Hunter so they're definitely one of my favorites I really like their mixture of melody with very hard riffs 
and it's fun to run into Ryan at shows around here because he he lives in Seattle I also like the band Zayo a lot um, my favorites oh well my favorite favorite band of all time ever forever and ever is the band Virgin Black they're from Australia and it's kind of gothic metal but the man that Rowan London's voice is incredible. Like, he's done actual opera training, and he does just amazing things with his voice. It's just one of those things where, you know, when a band has just that tone that resonates with your soul perfectly, that is what Virgin Black is to me. So I think I'm going to... Go ahead and mix a fresh a fresh batch to put on the back of this guy. One moment. JJ says that was sick art. Yeah, look into Demon Hunter. All of their art is quote unquote sick. Which is why I'm so inspired by it. JJ, have you seen my um, the Demon Hunter sculpture stuff? If not, I can show you my latest piece real quick. I've done a couple streams on it. Yeah, that's the piece I just finished based on that artwork. Amy, see you later. Thanks for stopping by. Good luck with your Wacom tablet issues. If you guys want to see a like a nice uh, nicer picture of that piece you can check out my Instagram and my Facebook page I made an official uh, Facebook like breath of life art studio Facebook page and I've been trying to update my Instagram all those links are down below I'm getting pretty needy here. Sophia says, I love spiders so much. Do you have pets? I, actually, I had a pet tarantula when I was a kid that we found on the outside of our tent when we were camping. And I had it in an aquarium in my room and it kept escaping. And every time it escaped, we would find it in my bed, like in the wrinkled rumpled blankets and sheets which occurs to me now what i should have done is put like a piece of cloth in its terrarium it probably would have liked that as a place to live um other than that no i do not have pets i had a pet snake uh that i gave away we had a gecko i mean i've had dogs i've had cats sadly i'm allergic to everything with fur so that's pretty limiting when it comes to having 
cute things around. Yeah, Sheridan, uh, if, if you want to check out my Facebook page and like it, that would be awesome. I'm trying to, trying to promote it, which is a thing apparently you're supposed to do as an artist. Sieghard says, my friend keeps his spiders in a fishbowl. Oh, that's a good idea. I keep having baby spiders rain down on my head while I'm working here. Apparently, some mama laid an egg sack right above my work area. And they keep just randomly bungee cording down onto my face. I think they're cute, but we have a zero tolerance policy for spiders in the house because they have a personal vendetta against my wife and they keep biting her and her bites turn into like giant wounds that swell up and you can see the poison traveling under her skin and it turns into these like hard not it's it's bad it's just bad I don't understand it I n never get spider bites but that I know of. decide if I want to glue this guy down to the board right now or not. Sophia, you had a pet snail. A giant African snail. That's hilarious. I've seen pictures of people with giant snails like crawling on their arms. It's very funny. Lucy says, going to look for your Facebook page now. Thanks. Yeah, look it up under Breath of Life Art Studio. what I'm going to do is put a little drop of super glue and then add the clay on top of that because that helps hold it down while I because this is going to be like a super thin layer So what that super glue does is anchors down this blob of clay, which means even though it's super thin, I can now add stuff to it and it should all hold into place. Dane says, do you want to make sculptures for the figures from your forthcoming book? And yes, I have been making sculptures and continue to. I've got this one right here. Uh, let's see, do I have the original? Ah, oh, yeah. So I've got this one 
for the main character from my first book, that's Beaumark. And I'll be doing a some ser run of uh, resin casts to uh, hopefully give away as promotional prizes. I might try to sell it. Selling casting sculptures, it's just, I don't think it's worth it for me. It takes so long. And there's so many other things I could be doing while I'm, rather than casting the same sculpture over and over. Um, unless I can get some, like, pipeline, <laughs> essentially, that I can figure out how to do it relatively quickly and painlessly. Certainly, painting them one, one color with, you know, maybe a, a shade or a highlight, uh, that would be a big time savings. I don't know. I'll be, I'll be seeing what I can do with that, but I will at least have some for promotional purposes. Lucy says, my son has just come down, should be asleep. He's very impressed by your art. Oh, well, tell him thank you for being impressed. How old is your son? I'll bet you won't be able to guess how old my sons are. He's 10. Nice. Just getting to that age where they're like quite a bit more self-sufficient. That's always nice. Sheridan is guessing 16. Close. Go higher. Dane says, maybe you could scan your sculptures and make them available on file or print them. Yeah, so that this is a, show you, this is a 3D print. I mean, I went in and did a little art over it and then this is the, the cast I made from it. So I have this as a digital file. I sculpted this in ZBrush and then had it printed out and then I've been making molds and casting it. Um, I still have to f yet to figure out which is the best casting method. Cause I mean, I really wanted to have all these like little dreadlocks sticking out just to, it makes it more natural. If I had them all flat down, uh, it would be way, way easier. But as it is, um, all of these little bits that stick out uh, get you know will catch bubbles in them unless they have vents and there's so many of them um, I've I tried a, two different ways of casting them you'll, you'll see I'm doing a uh, mold and cast video series and I'll be going into the details of that but yeah that is something that I'm doing I don't know about making that particular 3d print file available um, because if I want to give it away as um, Pro, you know, promotionally, uh, people won't have much incentive to, you know, go to the places I'm asking them to go if they can just print out their own. But I don't know. Maybe I'm being like Metallica in the early 2000s. Oh, and I managed to snap that leg off again. I think that what that's telling me is it's time to glue this guy down. Because... 
yeah, I cannot control my fat thumbs. I keep accidentally squashing parts of the legs. Sophia says, Josh, have you ever made a skeleton using a boxy sculpt? Would it uh, work if I use thick wire for the armature and put epoxy on top? Um, yeah, although epoxy sculpt is so strong that you really don't need armatures for it. Sophia says, you have kids? Yes, I have two boys. I'm still waiting for someone to guess how old they are. Sophia says, what? You look so incredibly young. I, I assume that's pronounced what? Because of how many A's and T's and question marks there are. Yes, I am not a young spring chicken. I am quite aged. I think it is, um, I think what throws people off about my age is all the, um, uh, is this leg? Yeah, okay. I think what throws people off about my age is all my affectations. I just, I don't dress or do my hair or speak or life like uh, most people my age. Seacard is going to watch it. Have a great time, everyone. Hey, you too. I hope you like it. I just saw Blade Runner yesterday. That was pretty pretty jaw-dropping. The latest Blade Runner. Blade Runner 2049. That guy knows how to make gorgeous films. Let me tell you. Bezelbub says, my guess would be under 10 years old. Your guess is way off, Bezelbub. Sophia says, exactly how it sounded in my head. Good. Glad I reproduced your incredulous scream properly. Sheridan says, it's got to be 17 or 18, I think, then. All right, so my youngest is 18. Now, how old is my oldest? Let's see. I, I think that's Michael. It could be my Michelle. Cravatari says, I'm from Switzerland. Can I have you as a master if I come to live in your town? Can you teach me? Please, it's my whole life's dream. Well, I don't know if I could be your master, but um, I, I'm always open to people hanging out and sculpting with me. I've been in several group sculpting clubs in my day. I'm not in one currently. I was, the last one I was doing was at uh, Digipin, which is a video game school uh, here in the, the Redmond area, started by Nintendo. And one of the sculpting teachers there just invited people from the video game industry to, you know, all come and sculpt together. And sometimes uh, students would also join us as a kind of you know, networking and and learning experience. So that was cool. Haven't done that in a while. Although I, I still do it at work. I um I guess every Tuesday I get together with who, whoever wants to and we do traditional sculpting in the game room. Sheridan says, is there anywhere uh, that you post your ZBrush sculpts, like ArtStation? No, I do not have an ArtStation account. I have so many accounts. It's just, it's so much to keep track of. Um, I have probably, I need to get it all on my website, breathoflifeart.com. But I have not got it all up there yet. Um, 
probably the place you could find most of my work is currently on uh, deviant art and I think I have some of my CG I have a category of CG art there but the place that you can probably see the most current updates of everything would be my Facebook page the, the breath of life art studio Facebook official Facebook page Anderson says, I'm not a good sculptor, but every teaching is important to me. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, I like that attitude. I also like learning lots of ancillary things that I'm not particularly good at. Like last night I was up till three in the morning uh, trying to make music for my channel in uh, FL Studio and then kind of gave up on that moved over to audio edition or adobe audition just putting loops together to try to make music that is good good background sculpting music but can't be you know trademark infringement type stuff and let me tell you i am not good at it but it's fun to try. Sophia says, is your older son 20? Close. Add one year. I got started very early. I was engaged at 16 and married uh, the month we graduated high school. I do not recommend that strategy. In case anyone's uh, wondering, it did not turn out well. Not surprisingly. Dang, guess 23. Finally, someone overshot it. Sophia says, what a freaking cool dad you are. OMG, I wish my parents were near that awesome as you when I was 18. They're not into art at all. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on who you ask, Sophia. One of my sons would say, yes, I'm an awesome dad. The other son, not so much. People are funny that way. They get to make up their own minds about things. Stefan says 78. That's right. My oldest son is 78 years old. <laughs> JJ says 21 or 22. Sophia says 21. Yes. 21. My oldest son is officially old enough to drink in the U.S. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if I became a grandfather just out of the blue, which would be hilarious. Grandpappy Josh. Uh, fortunately for me, I look forward to getting older. I find that my um, general overall happiness in life and like my ability to help others and with actual wisdom and not just like 
random stuff is so much better the older I get. And I like being able to help people. I've got experience, I'm like, I have a very stable career. All these things that make life a lot more pleasant uh, happen as I've been getting older. And it um, seems like the trajectory is remaining, assuming, you know, our society doesn't find a way to nuke itself or collapse in some other way. I'm really looking forward to my 50s. Uh, Zenetic Borel, that's, that's my best guess at how to put a Z and a D together. Zenetic uh, is asking, is that Fimo? It looks like Fimo. It's uh, Sculpey 3. Well, the, the chocolate looking part is Sculpey 3. The white stuff I'm working in now is Epoxy Sculpt, which is not a polymer clay at all. I find it's easier to stick epoxy clay on top for the details uh, than to add more uh, polymer clay on. Basil Bub says, how do you think you would celebrate becoming a grandfather? You know, in this particular situation there's some like semi estrangement so I I honestly don't know it would be awkward and weird um, it it totally depends on how my son would be with it he lives uh, far away from me now <laughs> Z says, oh, don't bother with my name. All right, you are now officially Z. Is that some kind of uh, Eastern European name, it seems? Although Boral sounds more uh, Scandinavian to me. I don't know. So I guess to answer your question about becoming a grandfather, I don't think that I would feel celebratory unless some relationships among adults got um, patched up first. Z says it's a Czech name. Ah, yep. So Czechoslovakia, that's that's definitely Eastern Europe, right? Or do you guys have a more specific designation for that region? Elsa says, are they into sculpting too? Uh, a bit. My my oldest son, not so much. He's more into um, performing arts, I guess you can say. Uh, vid video editing, writing uh, stories and stuff. Uh, my younger son is more inclined to the sculpting part, but he's also now getting more into video editing. But 
they are definitely uh, both very creative which is very um, hmm what's the word for that satisfying I guess gratifying I mean it's not like it's something I did to you know make them that way but I guess I guess it um, provides a good like thing that we can all relate to each other on that plane um, fortunately um, I may have made that sound like I said unfortunately what I said was fortunately my mom and dad are also creative people so we have a good extended line of creative people who enjoy spending time with each other and that is a delight i know so many families that are so alienated and don't you know just don't share common values or um passions you know so i'm very lucky in that regard Sheridan says, I think I'm going to work on some art now. Good luck with the sculpting, Josh. Thank you, Sheridan. Thanks for stopping by. You have a good day, too. JJ, swear the Black Widow has Oogie Boogie on its back. Oogie Boogie? Um, hmm. That sounds like a reference that I've heard, but I cannot think of what it is right now. Wait, isn't that a terrible song? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, there is a terrible song by a band in Texas called the Oogie Boogie that got, um, kind of went, went viral for how bad it was several years back. That's, that's where I'm remembering it. But I don't know what your reference to Oogie Boogie is in this case. Um, it's supposed to look like this, which is basically a Demon Hunter logo. Sophia says, you are so lucky, Josh. I'm the alien in my family. Always misunderstood. Yeah, that sucks. I know lots of people in that situation, and my heart goes out. Michael says, I'm really happy that my daughter of 13 likes sculpting together with me. Oh, that is great. That is super great. Yeah, I miss when my son was younger and would just hang out with me in the garage and make his fun little sculpts along with me.
super glue trick is not working for some reason. I think I must have had um, some of the safety solvent on that blob of clay. Sophia says, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie Boogie. Oh, okay. I have only seen that movie once. I don't remember. Is that the, the sack full of bugs? Oogie Boogie Land, I think, is the name of that terrible song, if you want to look it up and see a truly horrendous live performance of a truly horrendous band of a truly horrendous song uh jj says yes the black widow and guild wars 2 sorry my message was cut in two parts oh is there an oh is that what the the little uh the yes the halloween spider the plastic spider mini pet or i guess you could transform into that spider as well I did not know it was called the Oogie Boogie. Which I really should know because I was on the design team that created uh, Halloween for Guild Wars 2. <laughs> did a lot of the art and levels for it. My friend Trevor did the animation of that spider. Z says, that's cool. I should probably finish sculpting my Silvari statue sometime, too. It's been collecting dust since 2016 after my colleague dropped it on the ground. It's so difficult to get a hold, to get hold onto Fimo. Uh, um, to, to procure Fimo, like to, to find it, to buy it. It is definitely one of the really nice things about living in the U.S. is we don't have trouble finding almost anything. Bezelbub says, I love that holding that spider increases the size of some of the bundles. <laughs> I think that's a bug. Should probably move to an X Acto knife for some of these fine little lines and details. Lucy says, I'd love to do animation one day. Better keep practicing. Yeah, animation's fun. Uh, I actually animated, my, the first thing I tried animating was a spider um, back in the, I guess this would have been the mid 1990s. And animation software was not what it is these days. Let me tell you, it was, it was quite a rigmarole but I made a spider like it came down from a web it landed and then it like got up and then ran towards the camera I was I was very impressed with myself at the time I'm sure if I looked at it now I would not be so impressed
Dane69 says, eBay has it. I assume uh, re replying to Z about getting a hold of um, Fimo. Was that what you were using? Paradox says, it's a spider, so it has to be a bug. Ha ha. Very clever. Dane says, Josh, have you ever made a stop motion film just for fun? I have made a couple seconds of stop motion. If you count that as a film, then yes. And it was fun and very illuminating as to um, just how much work it takes to make those things. I don't think anything survives from that. I should, because I had to use a friend's camcorder. We did not have a video recorder growing up when I was a kid. Back then they were, you know, a thousand dollars or more. Um, and the way I made it, uh, it, it was a vid um, electric video camcorder, right? So it wasn't a film thing where you can stop each frame. I literally had to hit the record button and hit the stop button immediately and then it would pick up however many frames that was so it was not a um, not an elegant process let's put it that way Amy you're back you're like the Jesus of this group we thought you were dead Sophia says, I love stop motion films. I hope this art never dies, even though it costs so much time slash money to make, and there are easier techniques these days. Yeah, it's definitely just being kept alive by, you know, people who like it for its very specific aesthetic. Have you seen the preview for that uh, Dog, Dog Island movie? That looks pretty amazing. I think it's a Wes Anderson movie, and I think he did that Fox one like 10 years ago or whatever. I can't even remember who was in that, but that was very interesting. I tend to like his movies, I like his aesthetic. Stefan says, while you were gone, we learned that Josh's oldest son is 78 years old. That's right. Amy says they have a special type of charm. How old is Josh? Uh, Sophia says Coraline, Corpse Bride, and Frankenweenie are great. Yep. Stefan says Kubo and the Two Strings is a recent movie that had stop motion charm. Yeah, I still haven't seen that one. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if making these little ball eyes are worth it.
Dane says, yes, did that also in the 80s. Uh, stop motion with a video camcorder, you mean? Yeah, it's uh, not the right tool for the job. Let's just put it that way. Sophia said, <laughs> I love how you read my comments. Yeah, I got a little bit of a performance streak there. Performer streak. Which apparently makes me um, entertaining on camera, but in real life it's pretty off-putting actually. I try to control it as much as I can and then it just it just slips out and I embarrass myself and others all the time. It's tragic. A real tragedy. I'm just gonna keep going with it. I'm just gonna keep making these silly ball eyes, even though they're not remotely round or even, and just hope that the scale of the piece will sell it. Assuming I can get them all to stick. Hmm. I cannot. Okay. I give up. Sometimes you gotta know when to hold them. You gotta know when to fold them. Oh, I missed some comments. What's going on up here? Uh, Dane is saying, how will you cast a spider in silicone? Uh, I'm gonna use just a press mold. Amazing mold putty. Sophia says, Stefan, I need to watch it. Baseball says, Beelzebub says, Beelzebub, wow, says, <laughs> I think that out of all the different techniques I have seen in scary and scary ish movies, stop motion has always been able to unnerve me the most effectively. Uh, certainly in those tool videos, it's very unnerving. Those tool videos from the 90s. Uh, let's see. It's up It's up there with the best. Unfortunately, Second Breakfast has been kicked out of the standings. Oh, are you talking about lunch? Uh, Beelzebub says uh, it's so much more capable of pushing the Uncanny Valley thing on me. Okay. Uh, Paradesk says, God, that mic spike. Oh, yeah, I apologize because I'm using the mic on this camera which is right next to my face sadly i'll be sure next time i cackle loudly that i move my face away from the mic and then i'll, I'll forget and apologize again uh stefan says kubo is definitely aimed towards children but if you're interested in it would recommend watching it quite enjoyed it hmm i did not consider second breakfast i must reconsider my meal rankings i often do breakfast for lunch and don't do breakfast at all on weekends, I will often get up at 10.30 or 11 and not eat food until 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night. Especially if I'm doing fun stuff in the garage. And then I end up like sitting down and eating 3,000 calories in one and a half meals. Like a meal and dessert. It's really, it's really not the best strategy, you guys. All right, are we, are we done here? Mm -hmm. Sophia says, Stefan, I don't mind that it's for kids. I find the stop motion movies are very sophisticated, more than other kids' movies. Yeah, I feel like you kind of feel obligated to put more thought into movies that are that hard to make, <laughs> maybe. I mean, it's not like, it's not like the Smurfs or whatever is easy to make. I mean, CG is not, it's certainly not easy to do, but 
But stop motion probably is harder by a significant margin, I would guess. Paradesk says, Kubo was kind of a letdown for me. I really just wanted to see the story that Kuhn was telling and animated instead. Oh, Lucy says, okay, what did I miss? I went to make a cup of tea. A cup of tea? Really, Lucy? That is so cliched. Was it Earl Grey? Please tell me it wasn't Earl Grey. Then you would just be the embodiment of a walking cliche. glue in these leg tips down for extra stability when I mold it so they don't snap off while I'm molding it. Uh, so what did you miss? Uh, you missed me doing a brilliant performance of one of Sophia's comments that caused the microphone to spike wildly and make a really uncomfortable noise for everyone. And then I apologized for it. I promised I wouldn't do it again. I immediately retracted that promise and said I would do it again, but then I would apologize again later. I think that's more or less what went on while you were getting your tea, Earl Grey, hot. Roafet says, at this moment, I'm sculpting a skull. Hey, Roa! Thanks for chiming in and letting me know. What kind of a skull? A human skull? And what are you making it out of? I want to know these things. I'd love to know what people who watch YouTube streams uh, do. I need to know my audience so that I can uh, make the best material for them. Even the one says, genius. Lucy says, I always miss the good stuff. Well, you know, if you really need to hear that um, terribly uncomfortable cackling, you can always, this stream gets uploaded, uh, I don't know, a couple minutes after the stream ends. So you can always check back later to, let's see, it would probably be about one hour and 20 minutes in, would be my guess of where that very uncomfortable sound is. Okay, let's see if I can do this, this reading properly. Here's what Lucy says. <clears throat> Pete, wait. I can't do the performance if I don't understand what you're saying there. You said, nope, it was PG tips? Hmm. Okay, well, I'll just do the first part of it. I'm going to stand way back. Okay, ready? I'm so English! Did that spike? I need an audio engineer to help me with uh, these, these brilliant performances. You know, behind every brilliant performance is a equally brilliant technician, which I do not have. Uh, Sophia says, I'm researching pics of anatomy. Want to sculpt a skeleton? That is um, a great challenge and highly recommended. Man, the forms that so many bones have are so complicated. And it's funny because we all have this like cartoon version of what a skeleton looks like in our minds. But when you sit down and actually try to reproduce a skeleton, like even simple bones, it's it's jaw dropping. But I'm bum. Stefan says didn't need my ears anyway. Uh, okay, so I'm guessing that that still still made a bad sound. I apologize. Then I'll get even further away. Then uh, Roa said an alien. I assume you mean alien skull, and you're using clay. 
What kind of clay, though? Is it water-based clay or polymer clay? Or, like, Roma clay? Chavant? Alien skulls are so fun. They're, they're probably... They've got to be, like, the most fun thing to do because... You can be totally abstract and weird with them, and then you still end up with something very interesting. Alrighty. I feel like I know a way to make these little these little textury bumps on legs, but I can't, like, I've done something like that before, but I cannot remember how. Uh, Stefan says, you're going to have to do sign language casting now, because I made you deaf. I, okay. Even the one says, I'm deaf now, but I won't leave. Let's see. I'm deaf now that's the best I can do Dane says attercop which I'm just gonna guess is some kind of naughty word because it was held for review Sophia says, I want to know too, I'm always curious about what material other people use for their projects. Yep, yep, that's how we learn stuff, is we ask questions. Alright, I'm going to say that's fine. And do I need to add anything to Mr. Centipede? I could probably make his little knees knobbier and better. Paradusk says, try a texture pad for the legs. Yeah, so if I if I put a coating of the clay over and then textured that, yes, but the coating would be so thin that I think the texture pad would pull up most of it. Unless I did that super glue trick, which ended up not working for me this time, and I'm not sure why. Um, or I can make the legs fatter than I want them. I think I'm just going to leave them as is, see how it works uh, when I when I cast these guys. And if they, if they need more love, I can just make different legs and attach those. Rosa says, water-based. Oh, okay, that's challenging. You gotta keep it covered in a bag when you're not working on it. What uh, scale are you are you making it in? Is it life-size? Dane says, Adderkop is what the spiders say in The Hobbit. Oh. In the, uh, in the Merkwood? Sophia says, whoa, these creatures are so terrifying. The centipede. Yeah, well, I mean, this thing is quite benign compared to actual centipedes. I mean, look at that thing. Imagine if that was crawling on you. That would not be pleasant. Look at this guy. What if he stepped on that? I feel like if you stepped on it, he would actually, like, writhe up your leg instantly and stab you with those two little tail things. You know, yeah, centipedes are the worst. They're really, ugh. Really, the worst. I've never like I've seen cute versions of most bugs. There's definitely cute spiders, like the peacock spider, um, and some others. I can't remember their names. Those like those orb spiders that have the funny like spike back things. They look like. Like uh, Super Mario Koopa Troopas or something. Um, but centipedes? Nope. No cute centipedes that I've seen. 
Hmm. I don't know if putting a knee on each of these is a good idea. Dane says, Spider and Danish is Edderkop. Z says, Sophia, you should probably never visit Australia. <laughs> yeah, pretty much everything in Australia is terrifying and poisonous. I have no idea why people continue to live there. Let me see if I can come up with a good way to mass produce knees to stick on here. The only reason I would go to Australia is because my favorite band lives there in uh, Adelaide, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong. But they're far enough south where it's probably not all the, like, terrifying desert bugs and snakes and stuff. Amy said, I mean, there's a super tiny centipede, but I want to call it cute. Yeah, being small doesn't necessarily make you cute. Cute has to do with proportions and perceived... Um, human features I think like if you can map the eyes of the peacock spider onto you know a, a person they would basically be a baby with multiple eyes but still and they got like a big head and big eyes and they move in cute ways like little frantic flailing legs so it's easy to anthropomorphize them basically centipedes no no anthropomorphizing them except in the human centipede which I have no desire to see er Okay, maybe if I did a dot of super glue on each of the knees, that would get me more or less the same effect. Let me see what happens when I do that. Z says, friend once spooked me with the drop bear tail, even showing me a picture of it. It turned out to just be a picture of an angry koala. Angry koala. Um, I don't know that I've heard the drop bear tale. Sophia says, Z, oh God, I heard stories. People who were born that are probably used to it. People who are, who are born there are probably used to it. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I think the ones with shorter legs look significantly better than the ones with long legs. Yes. Dane says, have you ever sculpted a octopusy? Uh... No, I want to do a, I have a sketch for a Demon Hunter uh, sculpt that's got like octopus or squid, some sort of tentacles all around it. Someday when 3D printing is more reasonable, 
I'll probably ZBrush sculpt that and print it out. Because while sculpting it traditionally would be fun, um, I could just do it a thousand times faster in ZBrush. Alright, well those drops are going to shrink because super glue doesn't, um, well, because super glue shrinks. But, I think I will at least help keep the limbs stiffened while I do the, uh, the molding. Yeah, I'm hoping, so, these legs are just going to be the first two segments of the legs. I, I think I'm going to add these like really disturbingly long ones with wire that comes out of the mold. So, like you can imagine the leg extends out like to there or something. That'd be awful, truly awful, which is what I'm going for. They're going to be show you real quick how these are going to be utilized. Basically, I needed something that could come like pouring out of the hole in his forehead. So that's why I was doing like centipedes like this at first, but they're just so big that they would detract from the sculpture. So I hope if they're this size, uh, it won't, won't be so detracting. Alrighty, well, I think uh, this is a good place to call it quits for now while I let the super glue and epoxy dry. And hopefully, I'll be getting this tutorial out to you by, uh, by next weekend. All about making bugs. And yeah, I'll stick around for another uh, minute or two to answer any unanswered questions or concerns. Or if you need me to screech into the microphone again, I can I can upload that for you just as a sound file. So anytime you want to blow your eardrums out, you can do that. Uh, let's see. Z says, what was the most bizarre thing you have ever sculpted? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, most bizarre? Certainly some of these, here, I'm gonna show you some of my Zelda guys. And you tell me, because these things are based on, um, based on like 8-bit sprite work from the original Legend of Zelda game. And they were just really weird. So like, what is this? What is even going on there? You know what I mean? It's just, it's just very strange. And what's this guy? Look at this. He like bounces around. He's got this big belly. When you kill him, he turns into two of these bat guys. So those are pretty weird. Um, this guy I interpreted. I he's supposed to have swords in the game, but they like shoot out. And it just I don't know. It didn't seem. And I think they're supposed to be lions, but the actual artwork they have these long noses. So I was like, that's not a lion. So I made him like have these weird claw hoof things very weird um 
This pea hat's pretty weird. That's just like a flying flower thing. Um, oh yeah, I mean this guy I did for the Sculpey 101 series. It's very weird also. Look at that, he's got a weird arm coming out of his pot, poking him in the face and making him old. What's the deal with that? I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Answers, I don't know. I make a lot of weird stuff. And... Sophia says, see you soon. She retracted her other question. Now I'll never know what it was. Um, Amy, goodbye. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Please check out my website, breathoflifeart.com. Come and leave comments. I need comments on stuff. Like that's super important to me. Comments, comments. Okay. See you guys later. <laughs>